शांदे भाई ए भवतोरिया जाए जहार प्रशादे भाई ए भवतोरिया जाए कृष्ण प्राप्ति हो जाते कृष्ण प्राप्ति हो जाते का पद्मा वाख्या चित्त कोरिया क्या गुरु मुका पद्मा वाख्या ते कोरिया क्या अर ना कोरी हो माने आशा आर ना करी हो माने आशा श्री गुरु चरने रति यही से उत्तम गति गुरु चरण रति से उत्तम गति जे प्रसाद पूरे सर्व आशा प्रसाद पूरे सर्व चक्षुदान दिलो जय जन्मे जन्मे प्रभु से चक्षुदान दिलो जय जन्मे जन्मे प्रभु से दिव्य ज्ञान हृदय प्रकाशित मा भक्ति जहाँ होते अविद्या विनाश जाते प्रेम भक्ति जहाँ होते अविद्या विनाश जाते वेद गाय जहार करी तो गा 
आए जहार करी तो श्री गुरु करुणा सिंधु अदम जनार बंधु श्री गुरु करुणा सिंधु अदम जनार बंधु लोकना श्लोके रजीवाना लोकना श्लोके रजीवाना आहा प्रभु करो दया देह मोरे पद छाया आहा प्रभु करो दया देह मोरे पद छाया हे बे जाजु शुक्र त्रिभुवाना शील प्रभु पार्वती तपावना जय प्रभु पद जय प्रभु पद प्रभु पद जय प्रभु पद जय प्रभु पद जय प्रभु पद प्रभु पद जय प्रभु पद प्रभु पद जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय जय प्रभु पाद जय जय प्रभु पाद 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 जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय जय प्रभु पाद नित्य गौर हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल नित्य गौर हरि बोल हरि बोल नमो विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नीति नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवानी प्रचारिने निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात देश तारिने जान बल्लभ गिरीबरधारी यशोद नंदन भ्रज जन रंजन यशोद नंदन भ्रज जन रंजन या मुनाथिरावनचारी 
Yamuna Tira Vanata Hari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nittai Gaur Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Nittai Gaur Hari Bo Jai Jai Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Jai Shila Prabhu Pad God Prem Manande Haribo Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namani Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pricharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Desatarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jayamudirayat Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 9, entitled The Passing Away of Bhishma Dev in the Presence of Lord Krishna, text number 18. Eshavai Bhagavan Sakshad Adyo Narayana Puman Mohayan Mayaya Lokam 
Good, good I charity vrishnishu. Eshavai Bhagavan Sakshad. Adyo Narayana Puman. Mohayan Mayaya Lokam. Gudas Charity Vrishnishu. Eshavai Bhagavan Sakshad. Adyo Narayana Puman. Mohayan Mayaya Lokam. Gudas Charity Vrishnishu. Eshavai Bhagavan Sakshad. Adyo Narayana Puman. Mohayan Mayaya Lokam. Gudas Charity Vrishnishu. Gita, this truth is confirmed in the fourth chapter, second verse, 
and the perfect system of learning is to receive it from authority. The very same system is accepted universally as truth, but only the false arguer speaks against it. For example, modern spacecraft fly in the sky, and when scientists say that they travel to the other side of the moon, men believe this story blindly because they have accepted the modern scientist as authority. The authority speaks and the people in the general believe that. But in the case of Vedic truths, they have been taught not to believe. Even if they accept them, they give a different interpretation. Each and every man wants a direct perception of Vedic knowledge. But foolishly, they deny it. This means that the misguided man can believe one authority, the scientist, but will reject the authority of the Veda. The result is that people have degenerated. Here is an authority speaking about Sri Krishna as the original personality of God and the first Narayan. Even such an impersonalist and Acharya Sankar has said in the beginning of his commentation on Bhagavad Gita that Narayana, the Supreme Personality of God, is beyond the mental creation. The universe is one of the mental creation, but Narayana is transcendental to such material paraphernalia. Narayana Parogyatta Andam Yatta Sambhavam Andasyanta Sveni Loka Sapta Deepa Sanyadi Deepa Bhastya Sanyadi Vishwadev is one of the twelve Mahajanas who know the principles of transcendental knowledge. His confirmation of Lord Sri Krishna's being the original personality of Godhead is also corroborated by the impersonalist Sankara. All other Acharyas have also confirmed this statement and thus there is no chance of not accepting Lord Sri Krishna as the original personal to Godhead. Vishwadev says that he is the first Narayan. He is also confirmed by Brahmaji in the Srimad Bhagavatam. 10th canto, 14th, chapter 14th verse. Krishna is the first Narayan. In the spiritual world, Vaikuntha, there are unlimited number of Narayana who are all the same personality of Godhead and are considered to be the plenary expressions of the original personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. The first form of the Lord, Sri Krishna, first accepts, expands himself as a form of Paldev. And Paldev expands in so many other forms, such as Sankarsan, Pradyu, Anirudh, Vasudev, Narayana, Purusha, Ram and Narsingha. All these expenses are one and the same is to Tattva. And Sri Krishna is the original source of all the planetary expenses. He is therefore the direct personality of God. He is the creator of the metal world. He is the predominating deity known as Narayana in all the natural planets. Therefore, his movements among human beings are another sort of bewilderment. The Lord therefore says in the Bhagavad Gita that foolish persons consider him to be one of the human beings without knowing the intricacies of his movements. The bewilderment regarding Sri Krishna is due to the action of his twofold internal and external energy upon the third one called marginal energy. The living entities are expressions of his marginal energy and thus they are sometimes bewildered by the internal energy and sometimes by the external energy. By internal energetic bewilderment, Sri Krishna expands himself into unlimited number of Narayana and exchanges or accepts transcendental learning service from the living entity with the transcendental world. And by external energetic expansions, he incarnates himself in the material world among the men, animals or demigods to re-establish his forbidden relation with the living entity with different species of life. Great authorities like Vishma, however, escape this bewilderment by the mercy of Om Jnana Timarani Rasya Ghanan Chana Shala Kaya Chaksur Nilpanyena Thasma Shri Gurave Namaha Panchakalpata Rudyashtya Kripa Sindhu Bale Vacha Tadikana Paramedyo Vaishnadityo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Vasadekor Bhaktavinda 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're hearing Grandfather Bhishma give his instructions to Maharaj Yudhisthir before he departs from the world. Grandfather Bhishma is not in the most comfortable situation. He's laying on a bed, but a bed of arrows. Arrows which are sticking into his body. Could you imagine? It's inconceivable to us how a person could lay on a bed of arrows and at the same time speak such deep philosophical messages, such very important instructions. So Grandfather Bhishma, today we're hearing how he's instructing Maharaj Yudhisthir to understand how the personality of Godhead is present on the planet and how he has appeared in the Vrishni dynasty. So Srila Prabhupada talks about the importance of accepting knowledge by the proper system of transmission of knowledge, which is actually through disciplic succession. Srila Prabhupada refers to the fourth chapter, second verse. After Lord Krishna of Bhagavad Gita, after Lord Krishna had given the brief history of the Bhagavad Gita, how he'd instructed the knowledge to the Sun God, Viveshwan, and then from Viveshwan to Manu, then to Ikshvaku. But then, evam parampara praptam imam rajashyo vidu sakalinihā mahata yoga nashta parantapā. Lord Krishna is describing that the knowledge was thus imparted to the saintly kings, the Rajarshis. And the saintly kings understood it in this way. This knowledge was imparted through the system of parampara, or simply disciplic succession, from one authority down. And Srila Prabhupada explains to us how knowledge should not be dogmatic. And he gives an example, just like the child wants to understand who is the father, who is my father. So there are so many men, we can ask all the men, are you my father, are you my father? And in this way try to search out our father. But if one will simply go to the mother, then the mother can immediately tell us authoritatively who is the father. We want to understand the importance of taking knowledge from the proper channel. Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna, after hearing Lord Krishna speak the Chatur Sloki of the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna was greatly inspired and he said, Param, da, param Brahm, Param Dham, Pavitram, Paramambhavam. I totally accept you as truth. I accept you as the supreme abode. And then Arjuna goes on to say that not only am I accepting as you, not, not, I'm not the only one to accept you as the supreme absolute truth, that great souls also, and he mentions the names, Asita, Devala, Narada, Vyasa, they all accept you as being the supreme truth. And in this way, Arjuna is establishing the position of Lord Sri Krishna based on authority. Prabhupada in the purport talks about the scientists. And he said, scientists often, they say, people accept whatever the scientists say that is simply dogmatic, blind acceptance of authority. And Prabhupada gives the example that the scientists, you know, they say men went to the moon. Did they go to the moon? Why didn't they go again? If they went one time, why didn't they go again? 
And what did they gain when they got there? And they said, oh, they brought some rocks back. But the same rocks are here on earth. Where is the actual proof? So, according to the Vedic knowledge, we understand it is not such an easy thing to go to the moon. Not at least, not by mechanical means, not by just simply building a spaceship can we enter into the higher planets. You can go by yoga, but to go by mechanical means, that is just simply speculative. They're thinking that they can do like that. Many different things we accept blindly from science, just like the origin of life. People say life came from matter. Did it come from matter? Do we see people coming from chemicals? If we give you the chemicals, can you create life? The scientists say, in the future, just now coming, right? This is a claim. So, we're waiting a long time. In the meantime, can you produce maybe a, an egg? The chicken produces many eggs. Can you produce even one egg? Then the chicken is a better scientist than the sun. Because every day the chicken can lay so many eggs. We, we want to understand what is actual knowledge. Knowledge comes from Shabda, by hearing from the proper channel, by hearing from the scriptures like Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. When we hear from the Vedic authority, we get actual proof, scientific knowledge, not just simply some dogma which is rammed down our throat. You know, they talk about evolution and Darwin's theory of evolution. Prabhupada points out it's simply a theory. There is no proof. There is no evidence to support it. But people blindly follow. They blindly think like that. They think that life began a few thousand years ago when there was a big bang and there was a cre and from the big bang the creation came about do we believe it many people do they believe that's the origin of life it simply came from the big bang do we see big bangs creating life can we say calcutta came out from a big bang we woke up in the morning right during the night there was a big bang and we woke up in the morning and there it was, cow cutter, Haribo. <laughs> right? So we have to understand what is realistic, what is actually practical knowledge. The Vedas give us information about the origin of life. Srila Prabhupada was asked, why? so many people in the West were attracted to his teachings. And they asked, do you think the Western religions had failed them? And Srila Prabhupada explained, he said, the difficulty was that Jesus Christ was preaching to very uncivilized people. Not, it wasn't a very advanced civilization where Jesus Christ was preaching. It was in a desert, you know, in the Middle East. The, the, the people were somewhat barbaric. And you could see how they treated Lord Jesus Christ, that they crucified him because of what he taught. So it wasn't a very progressive civilization. And when Jesus had to speak about creation, he had to speak about it in a very simple manner. How did he, he describes it in the Bible? God created the world in seven days. How did he do it? You're not told. Don't ask these questions. Right? You're not told these things. And so Prabhupada explains people today are more philosophically inclined and they're more likely to 
question and want to understand. They want knowledge, they want this information. What happened? How did it all come about? We get that kind of information in books like Srimad Bhagavatam, Vedic literature. Everything is described step by step, how the creation came about, the actual origin of life. Not simply by chance, there is a creator and there's a very, very systematic progression in which the Lord produces this cosmic manifestation. It's all there in the Vedic scriptures. If you want to hear it, it's there. We present this information through our organs like our Bhaktivedanta Institute. Srila Prabhupada established one Bhaktivedanta Institute to, in, to teach, to preach to the scientists of the world that life does not come from matter, but life actually comes from life. The origin of life is from the original person. There is one original supreme personality of Godhead. In other words, there is a divine being and he is the original person responsible for the creation. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada describes how the Lord has both material and spiritual energy. There is both the material energy and there's the spiritual energy and there's also one more energy which we call the marginal energy, the living entities. All of us, we are all the marginal potency of the Supreme Lord. Marginal in the sense that we have the free will. We have that choice to choose where we want to reside either in the material realm or in the spiritual realm. We have that choice. It's our own decision. Where do you want to be? Do you want to be in the material world, which is a place of birth and death? Or do you want to live in the spiritual world, where there is a life of eternity, bliss and knowledge? We have that choice. We should understand either way we are controlled. If we choose to live in the material world, we're not free to do just everything we think we want to do. Actually, we are controlled. We are controlled by the material nature. And the material nature works in the form of the three modes, three modes, goodness, passion, and ignorance. We refer to them as gunas, gunas meaning ropes. Of course, here in India, everybody knows rajagun and tamagun. Nobody has any problem with that. But as soon as you talk of anything else, what? <laughs> They're bewildered. They never heard sattva, sattvic. You have to be in the mode of goodness. This is something new for most people. They heard a lot about rajagun and tamagun. And people actually think rajagun, that's where we enjoy. Come and enjoy the passion. They don't know the result of passion. If you read Bhagavad Gita, the result of passion is distress. So watch out. You go into the passionate mode, watch out. Because coming very soon will be the distress. It's the natural result of passionate activities. We should be very cautious. Either way, we are controlled. Either we are controlled by the material energy or by the spiritual energy. If we choose to take the shelter of the spiritual energy, we have to qualify ourselves to enter in there. You have to qualify, just like 
you know, you want to go to another country, you have to have a passport, you have to have a visa, you know, like that, they want to see, you know, your credentials. So similarly, we want to go into the spiritual realm, into the land of eternity, bliss and knowledge. There's a qualification. You have to be pure. You have to give up that selfish mentality. You have to give up the desire to conquer and exploit and to be the controller. Instead, we have to accept a position of subordination. We have to recognize that we are not the master, but we are the servant. And we want to enter into that spiritual realm, we have to have the mood of service, to give service to that one Supreme Lord. That is the qualification to enter into the spiritual world. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains it in very simple language. Janma karma cha me devyam evam yo vedi takvataha takvadeham punar janma neiti mamiti so arjuna. Lord Krishna is describing that if we understand the birth and the activities of Lord Krishna to be transcendental, then when we give up the body, we will never have to take birth again in this world. Instead, we will enter into the spiritual realm. But qualification, understand Lord Krishna, understand his position, how his birth and his activities are all transcendental. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada referred to a verse from the 10th canto Srimad Bhagavatam, which is spoken by Lord Brahma. Now, Lord Brahma had uh, he made a, a little bit of an offense, actually. He was looking at Lord Krishna in the fields, in the forests of Vrindavan. And he saw Lord Krishna playing the part of the cowherd boy. And he was sitting with all the other gopas, and they were having their lunch together, and Lord Krishna had his yogurt and rice in his hands. And Lord Brahma is looking from his heavenly abode, he's looking down at Lord Krishna, and he's thinking, is he really the Supreme Lord? Is he really my Lord? I am Brahma. I am the, I, I'm the original person in the universe. I am the first person to take birth. Is this little boy, this little child, is he really my worshipful Lord? So he said, if he, let me test him. Brahma decided, let me test him. So he, he saw Lord Krishna with all the cows and the cowherd boys. So it happened that some of the cows had gone, drifted, they'd wandered away. So Lord Krishna said, I will go and look for them. I will go and find them, bring them back. So Lord Krishna went to look for the cows. And when he came back, he found that all the cowherd boys had disappeared. Lord Brahma had stolen all the cowherd boys. And then Lord Brahma also stole all the cows and Lord Krishna was remaining alone. Lord Krishna is the omniscient Supreme Lord. He knows everything and he could understand this is the work of Lord Brahma. Therefore Lord Krishna utilized his potency to expand himself to take the place of all the cowherd boys and all the cows. And Lord Brahma looked away for one moment of his time, but one moment of Lord Brahma's time was one year of time on this planet. And for one year, Lord Krishna was playing the part of all the cows and all the cowherd boys. And then Lord Brahma came back, and he was astonished to see all the cows and all the cowherd boys were there with Krishna. Because Lord Brahma was thinking he had stolen them and he had hid them away. So he was surprised to see Krishna and 
all the cowherd boys and all the cows were all there. And then Lord Krishna revealed to Brahma that within each and every cow and cowherd boy, he revealed the form of Lord Vishnu, the form of Lord Narayan was there in the heart of all living entities and in the cows and then there was also so many other brahmas and shivas and they were all bowing down to the supreme lord krishna brahma was completely bewildered his brain popped it was just too much for his brain to comprehend so then lord krishna by his Yoga Maya potency, he restored the situation and Brahma came back to his senses and offered prayers. And he understood, he was thinking, you see, he was thinking that this Krishna is just an ordinary child. He was thinking, could he really be my worshipful Lord? But then Brahma saw that this boy Krishna was not just simply his worshipful Lord. He was not even just simply Narayan, but he was the origin of Narayan. And all the Narayan forms of the Lord, which are everywhere, that they are all expanded from that one personality, Lord Sri Krishna. Therefore, we find in the Srimad Bhagavatam that when when Sutta Goswami was asked to describe the incarnations of the Lord, he listed many different avatars and he described their activities and their birth and their mother and so on. And then when he came, after uh, he came to describe Lord Krishna, then he described Ete Chamsa Kalapumsa Krishna's to Bhagavan Swayam that of all the incarnations of the Lord, there is one original Supreme Lord over all of them, and that is Lord Sri Krishna. L Lord Krishna expands himself. Lord Brahma, in his Brahma Samhita, gives the example, just like you have one candle. Today we were lighting the ghee wicks. We lit one ghee wick, then from the one ghee wick, we could light all the other ghee wicks. You see? You have one candle, the heat and light in the original candle will be the same in all the other candles or ghee wicks. But there's one original to start off everything. In the same way, Lord Sri Krishna is that one original personality and from him so many other forms come all of the Vishnu avatars, all the different forms of Narayan, the Purusha avatars, they're all coming from him. There are two realms. There's the spiritual realm and the material realm. In the spiritual realm, all the devotees are there and they're enjoying the pastimes of loving reciprocation in the association of the Supreme Lord and all of his different incarnations. Here in the material world, the Lord also comes. He will come at different times, at different places, and he will appear in different species of life. Sometimes he comes as a fish. Sometimes he comes as a boar. Sometimes he comes as a turtle. He comes in Many he even comes and forms species of life which we don't know. Half man, half lion. This is the Supreme Lord. He comes into this world for a purpose, to enlighten all of us. The nature of the creation and to understand that there is one Supreme Personality over everything. The world does not just come about by chance. Chance, there's no such thing as chance. Nothing is ch There's a reason for everything. In the same way the Lord comes with a purpose. He has a mission in mind. And his mission 
is to attract each and every one of us out of this world of birth and death to go back to our real home in the spiritual realm to get free of this samsar this wheel of birth and death which is not a very pleasant existence the real life is there in the spiritual world but we are reluctant to go we're thinking Oh, I'm having a good time here in Calcutta. They have nice sweets here. Bengali sweets, right? We like, you know, it's not so bad. But remember, this world is temporary. We have to die. We cannot stay here forever. When we die, we take another birth. Where will you take birth again? Maybe you'll come back in Calcutta, but maybe you'll be a street dog rather than a human. You don't know. Now you have the human body. Human life is meant for responsibility. We have responsibility. Prabhupada gives example. Just like government worker, the highly placed government officer, he will enjoy the facilities. He will have car. He'll get house, he may even get servants, the salary will be more because he's highly placed. But with his position comes responsibility. In the same way, human beings, we're enjoying so many more facilities than the other species of life. The dogs, the cows, the pigs, the birds, the worms they do not have the same facility as the human being. We have colleges, we have schools, we have hospitals, we have public transport, we have telecommunication, we have a lot of facility which is not there to the other species of life. But with these facilities there is also responsibility and that responsibility begins when we start to inquire about the purpose of life. Who am I? Why am I here? Where did this world come from? Who is, who is the creator? How did it come about? All of this knowledge is available. It's all there. You just have to hear. You just have to read the Vedic literature. So one of our main purposes in being here in this uh, place, in this Rathyatra festival, to introduce people to this Vedic knowledge, to distribute the literature of Srila Prabhupada, and to give everyone the opportunity to wake up to their responsibility in this human form of life. Hare Krishna. Are there any questions? Yes? There's some hands up there. We come forward. Thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhu. So, as you said, uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, as you said, in modern times uh, there is Big Bang Theory, but uh, they don't have proof. And uh, uh, according to our uh, Vedic literatures, uh, when uh, Lord Vishnu inhales, uh, universe, many universes are destroyed and when he exhales, universes are created. Then when someone asks, then where is the proof of this? Then what? Our proof is there in the Vedic literature. The Vedic literature are the words of God. They're not ordinary words. They're this is the words, the words of, of God. God. Just like we gave the example. Who is your father? Who will you believe? Your mother or any other woman? You know, so many people are in the street. Mother. Yeah, you have to believe your mother. Vedas are like the mother. They tell us everything about the father. You want to know who is the father? You read the Vedas, you get the information. We have to accept that information. Now, no one can prove anything wrong in the Vedic knowledge. All the information is there. And Prabhupada also said, a lot of information is there to in, for scientific research. They can understand more. Just like uh, 
the theory about well, the, the development of the embryo in the womb, how the child develops, all of that information is there in detail in the Vedic literature. It's only recently that the, the medical science developed the knowledge, the technology to see how the child in the womb is developing. But that information was already there in the Vedas a long time ago. And similarly, and Vedic knowledge, for example, like uh, they thought that when you sterilize something that you kill all the germs and bacteria. The theory of sterilization. Heat something, make it so hot, you kill everything. Not true. Because within fire there are there also there is also living entities. There's also living. So the Vedic literature, that's what they discovered recently. They discovered that there are actually living entities also after sterilization. Within the fire, there are living entities. Only recently they discovered that. But that knowledge was there in the Vedas. We know these things. And again, you know, this, so, much, so much information like this that we're very gullible. We simply believe what the scientists tell us without proper philosophical investigation and without seeing real evidence. Just like even today, people often believe that they went to the moon. We don't believe it. It was simply wonderful propaganda, American propaganda. <laughs> Yes? So we want to accept the process of creation? Yes. We are giving a practical theory how it takes place. Sciences have no knowledge of spiritual energy. Their knowledge is only of matter. They are simply working with matter and chemicals. They do not know the origin of life. They cannot create life. They take the semen, they take the sperm, to use it, create life. But they cannot simply use chemicals to create life. So our scientific members, our Bhaktivedanta Institute, they are preaching to Nobel Prize winners and very prominent scientists. We want to impress upon them the actual origin of life, the nature of life. It's a big preaching field. A lot of work to be done. But we, ha we have the answers to all of these things. We can give them detailed information on the process of creation. It's described very nicely, very systematically, how the elements come about one after another. Srila Prabhupada was reading the Bible. He heard from the Christian Bible. Uh, there was a statement in the Bible that said, In the beginning was the Word. And Prabhupada immediately said, Yes. He said, that's right. We agree with that. In the beginning was the word, meaning sound. If there is a word, there has to be sound. So the, the first element of creation, ether. Everything, the creation comes about from sato to gross. The finest element is ether. We have earth, water, fire, air, and ether. And the the Christian Bible says, in the beginning was the word. In order to have a word, there must be ether. The sound can be vibrated in the ether. So Prabhupada went, explained like this. He said, this is the same as the Vedic teachings. You see, the, the scriptures of the world all teach the same thing. The Bible, the Quran, the Bhagavad Gita, they're all teaching us the word of God, the, how God creates the world. And how he actually does it is described in detail in the Vedic literature. So, if you don't have Srimad Bhagavatam, get a set and read. It's all there within the Srimad Bhagavatam. Fallacies of science and how 
chicken is the best scientist. Chicken is the best scientist because it can produce egg. Scientist has not yet produced an egg. I heard that how I heard from somewhere I don't remember that how in Christian faith they say that creation happened. They calculate about 4,000 years ago or something. I don't know how they calculate, but yeah. <laughs> so like uh, if, if Christianity is also uh, Jesus was also representative of God who gave to lower class of people, but then how can there something be so contradictory? Well, actually, you, you don't find that statement that the world was cre created 4,000 years ago. That's not. It's, yeah, materialistic people, they speculate like that. They, 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 they speculate about how life develops. And the human being evolved from the lower species, right? So our ancestors are all apes. But do we see any apes becoming humans? We don't see it. We, it, it there's, no, there's no evidence to support this. It, it was simply a theory. Theory means speculation. So Prabhupada said, knowledge should be deductive. We should hear from authorities. But people are trying to take knowledge by the ascending process. They're trying to understand everything by their own efforts by speculation. Is it like this? Maybe it's like that. How about this idea? And they come up with so many different theories trying to present philosophy. All of the knowledge is already there for us in the scriptures. If we just simply hear. The scriptures are aparushya. means they're not from any ordinary person. They're without the defect. Conditioned souls like Darwin and other people, they are all conditioned souls and their theories are all defective. Even nowadays more and more people are rejecting the Darwin theory. It, be, it, it was common for people to accept it for some time. Science changes. All of you who have studied science know so many different theories. The corpuscular theory the wave theory, the atomic theory. And there's so many, there's always one more after and, and still they have not fully explained science. They cannot understand the creation. Just speculations. One theory after another. We have real knowledge. We don't need to change anything. All the information is there. So we say, Atato Brahma Jignasa. Now you're a human being. Understand what is Brahman, what is matter, and what is spirit. Scientists cannot understand that there is such a thing as Brahman, that is spiritual energy. The, they cannot understand the origin of life in the heart. Beyond. Prabhupada went to MIT. And he asked them there, what is the difference between the living and the dead body? Nobody could give proper answer. Just so many speculations by their scientific, materialistic, empirical understanding. But everything is there in the scriptures. We know the difference between living body and the dead body. It's very easy, very clear. Everything is made very clear from the Vedic scriptures. You hear the Vedic knowledge. We just have to be submissive. And you put, then if you have difficulty to accept it, just try following it. Try following the process. Just like sometimes we tell people, why don't you just try being a devotee? Give up meat, fish and eggs. Give up your intoxication, gambling and illicit connections with the other sex. And just chant every day 16 rounds. See how you change. Just see how much you change. Then you will know how authoritative this Krishna conscious process is. 
This is not something new. This is not some speculative process. This is the ancient process of self-realization. This is the original knowledge coming through the parampara, through the disciplic succession. We want to understand this knowledge, we have to become free of sin, give up sinful activities, then you can begin to understand. Yes. Hare Krishna Mahal, uh, you explain that uh, as one being has got more personal difficulties, so he has more responsibility to make this one life successful. So like we read scriptures, we are from Prabhupada and devotees also about the responsibility of one life. But again and again, because uh, living entity conditioned soul is in 84 lakh species roaming, and so many bad times. So ten years is again forgetting the nature of this world. So how to keep reminding us uh, like that we are responsible for our life? You we stay in the association of devotees. You stay with the devotees and regularly here. Right? It, you have to practice. Abhyasena tu konteya vairagyena chagriyate Arjuna was saying, very difficult to control the mind, right? But, Krishna said, I know it's difficult, but possible. Two things are required, abhyas and vairag. So you have to practice. You have to hear this knowledge regularly. You have to come and hear Srimad Bhagavatam regularly. Or you read it yourself regularly. If you're regularly hearing, then you will be convinced, you'll remind yourself the nature of this world and the actual goal of life. But we have to also have a little virag. If you're still trying to hold on to this material, then it's more difficult. <laughs> you have to let go, you have to be willing to put down the material to hold on to the spiritual. You have to put down your daily newspaper and you have to put, turn off the Bollywood movies and you have to pick up Srimad Bhagavatam and your Japa beats. Right? It's like that. You have to be determined. While in our youth centers, when we are recording, sometimes just after the lecture we tend to forget everything. So, how can we have a similar effect when we don't have opportunity to hear from a live devotee? Well, that's the same question he asked, right? We just heard that question. So, I told you how to do it. You have to hear and hear and hear again and again. Don't go away. Keep hearing and you'll remind yourself. Just like people get a bump on the head, they lose their memory. We've had, I know a few devotees like that. They, they had a bump on the head, concussed, unconscious. It came back to consciousness, they didn't know anything. Forget everything. Who am I? How do you get the memory back? You have to introduce them. This is your wife. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, like that, you know, you have to be introduced to everyone, they take you home, this is your home. So same way, devotees, we come to the temple, we see the deity, here's the Supreme Lord, Lord of the universe, we bow before him, I am his servant, right? You come to the temple, you see the Lord, you worship him, you offer obeisances, you read the scriptures, gradually you start to remember. The memory comes back. It's there, it's within us. Chaitanya Charitamrita said, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem Shodya Kabunai Shravanadi Shuddha Chiti Korihi Udai. Love of Krishna is there in the heart, but it awakened by hearing. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave great importance to hearing. This is the beginning of our pure devotion, when we start to hear. 
And you have to hear regularly for a long time. We've been conditioned, we've been in this material world as conditioned souls for a long time. So it's going to take some time to get our memory back, to come back to proper consciousness. You have to hear regularly for a long time. But if you're very serious, it won't go in one ear and out the other. It will come in the ear and go to the heart. When you're really serious, you won't let it just go out the other ear. You'll take it to the heart and your heart will change. So you have to feel like that, that this, this knowledge is going in my heart. You have to take it very, very attentively and try to understand. That's why we have so many courses. We're teaching so many courses. We have Bhakti Shastri, we have Bhakti Vaibhav, we have Bhakti Vedanta. All these courses are there just to help us to understand and to remember more this knowledge. Hare Krishna. It means like uh, we may become trees or animals. So they say, then what is the problem? And how to make them understand that animal life is more, uh, I mean, there is more suffering in animal or other species life compared to human species. In human life also there is suffering, but how to make them understand that there is more suffering in uh, animal life? No, tell them, why don't you try it? Become a dog. Go ahead, get down on your hands and knees and be a dog for a few days. Tell me how you're enjoying. Go and play with the other dogs and bite them. Fight with them. Tell me you're happy, tell me you're enjoying. You want to become a tree? Practice being a tree. We'll dig a hole and put your feet in the ground and we'll leave you standing in the hot sun. Tell me you're enjoying. Yes, she will, till the butcher comes with a big knife to cut you, right? Indra also became a pig, and he was thinking, I'm happy here, let me stay here. Then the butcher came with the big knife, and he was ready to cut, chop up Indra, and so he all right, all right, take me. He didn't want to go with his guru, right? He got cursed by his guru to become a pig. And then the guru came to take him back. He said, no, no, I'm happy here. I get food. I have all my children here. All my wives are here. I'm happy here. So he said, okay, just wait. Butcher coming. Where's the big fat pig? Indra's the biggest, fattest pig. Yes, we'll chop him up. So then, and all right, all right, I'll come with you. So, yeah, you want to be a pig? Go ahead. You have my blessings. <laughs> Go and live in the pigsty. In China, during the Cultural Revolution, when they had Cultural Revolution in China, they used to do that to people. They'd send people from the city who were living in the city, they'd send them to the countryside, and they would, they would have to go and live in the pigsty with pigs for some time. Just, it was like a punishment because they felt, you know, these people, they're exploiting, they're taking advantage, you know. So send them to the country, said, let them have a hard, a more, do, do some austerity, tapashi. Even the one, Deng Xiaoping, Deng Xiaoping, Deng Xiaoping, he became the, the, the chairman of China for some time. He died now. But during the Cultural Revolution, he was sent to the very rural area. And he, he said he, he lived in the pigsty also. They did that. They did these kind of things. That was a cultural revolution, you see, because they wanted culture, they want to make everybody the same, you know. There were intellectuals, the intellectuals were like high class, but they wanted to make everybody the same. So they would do things like this. So, I don't believe that you can be happy in the pig body. 
Yeah, dog body, they're thinking, oh, good fun, run every day, and play with all the dogs. Yeah, go ahead, go and, be, go and enjoy like a pig, and like a dog, play with them. They don't know, they're, they're, they're so, it's so foolish to argue like that. These people are so stupid to say things like that. It, it, they're just a waste of time. If they cannot understand the misery in these forms of life, they're not very intelligent. We should understand how much misery there is in these forms of life. Could you imagine a fish? Little fish, they swim about in the water. Do you think it's fun? This is punishment. You have to go through these different species of life. It's, we've been through it. In the past, we've had all these bodies. Now we have the human body. Now we have the responsibility. We have the chance to get out of this cycle of birth and death. But if you want to stay here, that's your choice. It's up to you. Go ahead. Take birth and die again and again. Different species. So people who are a little intelligent, who are thoughtful, they think how to get out of this world and not come back. That is Krishna consciousness. That's what you get out of Krishna consciousness. So it reads as the creation of the human beings who are of one species only and who stop their eatables in the belly. This is the ninth interpretation. So it's here like it's written here like uh, the creation of the human beings who are of one species only. So uh, I'm getting confused. Mm -hmm. well, there are different different varieties of human beings. They're all human beings but the different varieties, just like we see African, Chinese, Caucasian, yeah. even in India, so many different races are there. You can see different varieties, different species, all human species, but different, still different. So 400,000 different human species, yeah. but all humans, under the heading humans but different varieties of humans. But still it's one species, human species. As described there, keep the food in the belly. Right? So all the humans do that. Whether you're Chinese or a ca Caucasian or uh, uh, Indian or whatever. But different species. Mm. Okay? Maybe maybe we stop now, will we? Yeah? Okay. One last question then. Okay, we'll take this one last question. Krishna is not the original person of the body. Yes. Well, you could tell them the story about Brigamuni, how Brigamuni went to test Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. Right? He went to Brahma and Lord Brahma is his father, but he didn't respect him very well and Brahma got angry. He didn't do anything, but he felt, you know, he wasn't pleased. And Brigamuni could understand Brahma was not happy with him. Then he went to see Lord Shiva and Lord Shiva came to embrace him because they're brothers. Brigu and Shiva are brothers. They're both sons of Brahma. But Brigu said, don't touch me. You've got all these snakes and ashes on you. I don't want to be touched by you. Lord Shiva got very angry. He was so angry he was going to kill him. Only Parvati had to come and control her husband and tell Brigu, go away quick before he kills you. 
So then he went to Vishnu and he went to see Lord Vishnu and he, Lord Vishnu is laying there being massaged by Lakshmi and he came and kicked Vishnu on the chest. And what did Lord Vishnu do? He got up and said, I hope you did not hurt your foot on my hard chest. So Bhrigu was astonished that he kicked Lord Vishnu on the chest. And Bri Vishnu did not take any offense. Rather he apologized to Bhrigu, I hope you did not hurt your foot on my hard chest. So Bhrigu could understand that Lord Vishnu is certainly superior over Brahma and Shiva. And Lord Krishna is non-different Vishnu. Vishnu is the expansion of Lord Krishna. So you can explain that story to them, help them to understand the supreme position of Lord Krishna. We also have a nectar of devotion in the, nect in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu book. You will see there are 64 qualities listed of Krishna and it's described that up to Brahma, uh, living entities can have 50 out of 64 qualities. Lord Shiva can have 55 out of the 64 qualities. And Lord Vishnu can have 60 out of the 64 qualities. But there are four qualities which are unique to Krishna. Venu Madhurya, Lila Madhurya, Rupa Madhurya and Prima Madhurya. Right? His flute playing, his wonderful form, beautiful form, his wonderful pastimes and his association, loving association with his devotees. These are unique only to Krishna. And that's why Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki. Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Gaur Premanande. Hare Bo. Hare Krishna. So, as Maharaj is speaking about the importance of uh, books and reading books and hearing from the devotees. So, today and tomorrow is the last day uh, of getting this special offer. <coughs> so, after that you will not get this offer today and tomorrow. So, if you like to take now, we have a 100 rupee book set. So, if you uh, get this four book set, you will get a uh, Teachings of Lord Chaitanya, uh, <coughs> free of cost, or Science of Self-Realization in English, and we have two, three books of of one fifty rupees book set where we get uh, nectar of devotion free of cost. So Maharaj is there, and you can take from Maharaj now. Hari Bo. So anybody like to get, you can come now. This is 100 rupees book set. There is four book beyond birth and death, meditation. Kingo Kingo book say it right here. Jaldi a jayega.
हरे कृष्ण एक तो डिवोशन ले सकते हैं महाराज के हाथ से वन फिफ्टी रुपीज है इसका इंग्लिश बुक से ओवर हो गया है हिंदी के साथ आप ले सकते हैं हरे कृष्ण और कोई लेना चाहेंगे के साथ साइंस ऑफ इंग्लिश में कल बहुत कंटिन्यू इंग्लिश बोल रहे थे तो हम लोग इंग्लिश